Sola Scriptura, everyone. This is His Word Only. Alright, let's get straight into this. So today, we're going over the Nephilim, the demons of old. And we're going to start out with the root word of Nephilim, which is Nephal. Which means, oops, let's go down here. To fall, lie, or be cast down. Fall, the fall of a violent death. Basically, the fall. And then Nephilim, we got here. Noun, masculine, Nephilim. Nephil. Giants, name of two peoples, one before the flood and after the flood. Basically, it means the fallen ones. That's what it means. Now we're going to go back to the Book of Enoch. We're going to see how these giants and these Nephilim became the demons. And how they were after the flood as well. Alright, then the... All right, this is Enoch, chapter 10. Then said the Most High, the Holy and Great One, spake, and said, Uriel, the son of Lamech, and said to him, Go to Noah, and tell him in my name, Hide thyself, and reveal to him the end that is approaching, that the whole earth will be destroyed, and a deluge is about to come upon the whole earth, and will destroy all that is on it. And now instruct him that he may escape, and his seed may be or may be preserved for all the generations of the world. And again the Lord said to Raphael, Bind Azazel hand and foot, cast him into darkness, and make an opening in the desert, which is in Dudael, and cast him therein, and place him upon the rough jagged rocks, and cover him with darkness, and let him abide there forever, and cover his face that they may that he may not see light. And one or on that day of great judgment he shall cast into fire and heal the earth which is or which the angels have corrupted, and proclaim the healing of the earth, and that they may heal the plague, and that all the children of men may not perish from all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed, and have taught their sons. And the whole earth has become corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel to him ascribe all sin. And to Gabriel said the Lord, Proceed against the bastards and the reprobates, and against the children of fornication, and destroy the children of fornication, er, and destroy the children of the watchers from amongst men. Send them one against the other, that they may destroy each other in battle. Greek mythology, there is a uh, story called the Clash of the Titans. Maybe the Bible is right and is the truth. You know. Anyways. In the length of days shall they not have, and no request that they, their fathers, make of thee shall be granted unto the fathers on their behalf. For they hope to live an eternal life, and that each one of them will live five hundred years. And the Lord said unto Michael, Go, send ye, or go, bind Semyaza and his associates, who have united themselves with women, and have defiled themselves. Five hundred years. Sons have another. They have seen the destruction of their beloved ones, or with them, or sorry, guys, the eleven. That each one of them will live five hundred years. And the Lord of Michael go bind Simeon and associates, and have united themselves with women, as to have defiled themselves with them in their uncleanness. And when their sons have slain one another, and they have seen the destruction of their beloved ones, bind them fast. For seventy generations in the valleys of the earth. Wait. 
70 generations. This means they're coming back. Hmm. If you wonder if we're seeing a bunch of weird stuff going on, maybe because they're back. I'll read the rest of this and then we'll move on. Forever and ever is uh, sorry, with them in all cleanness and their sons have slain another and they have seen the destruction of the beloved ones. Bind them fast for 70 generations in the valleys of the earth till the day of their judgment and their consummation till the judgment that is. Forever and ever is consummated. In those days they shall be led off to the abyss of fire and to the torment of prison in which they shall be confined forever. And whosoever shall be condemned and destroyed will from thenceforth be bound together with them to the end of all generations. All right. Now, this is where you're going to see the start or where demons come from. Okay. And he answered and said to me, and I heard his voice, Fear not, Enoch. Thou righteous man and scribe of righteousness, approach hither and hear my voice, and go. Say to the watchers of heaven, who have sent thee to intercede for them, you should intercede for men and not men for you. Wherefore have ye left the high holy and eternal heaven, and lain with women, remember they left their spiritual bodies, you know, with women, and defiled themselves with the daughters of men, and taken to yourselves wives and done like the children of earth and begotten giants as your sons and though you were holy spiritual living the eternal life see there it is you have defiled yourselves with the blood of women and have begotten children with the blood of flesh and as the children of man have lusted after flesh and blood as those also do who die so they lusted after flesh and blood. Starting to see where maybe human sacrifice and all this stuff is starting to come from. And occultism and all that. Perish, therefore, have I given them wives also they might impregnate them and beget children by them. Thus, nothing might be wanting to them on earth. You know, for the children, this is talking about the children of earth, us humans, right? He's appointed us to have wives and to impregnate them to carry on the lineage, right? But not the angels. But you were formerly spiritual, living the eternal life, and immortal for all generations of the world. And therefore, I have not appointed wives for you, for as for the spiritual ones of heaven, and heaven is their dwelling. And now, now we're getting to demons. And now the giants who were produced from the spirits of flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth. And on the earth shall be their dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies. Sorry about that. Excuse me. Because they were born from men and from the holy watchers is their beginning and primal origin. They shall be evil spirits on the earth. Sorry, I got a nose itch. And evil spirits shall be called. As for the spirits of heaven, and heaven shall be their dwelling. But as for the spirits of earth, which were born upon the earth, and on the earth shall be their dwelling. Now, Nephilim also encompasses these human slash um, animal hybrids as well. And also angel, animal, whatever hybrids, because it says they did all kinds of stuff, right? We read that in the last one with the Watchers thing. So, and in my opinion, I think all the Nephilim have become demons, you know, or evil spirits. Okay, and here we go. And they should be used spirits, but the spirits of earth which were born on earth and shall be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants and the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle. Now you see why, you know, Paul, or was it Peter says, I fought the good fight. 
and work destruction on the earth and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses. This is where baby sacrifice, all this stuff comes into play, guys. It's all right here. <laughs> And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. See why God sent the flood. Okay, so we'll move on so this video is not too long. This is 1 Samuel 17, 26-50. This is a long one, but this is where... I want you to see the attitude of David here when he goes up against Goliath and on the way to Goliath. So this is a good read here. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the men that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is the uns er, ready? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? man after God's own heart. And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto, or unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why come thou or down hither? And with whom hast thou left thou few sheep in the wilderness? Basically saying, why did you leave the sheep? <laughs> you know, why aren't you tending to them? I know thy pride and thy not or naughtiness of thine heart. And thou art come down that thou might, mightest see the battle. And David said, what have I now done? <laughs> Is there not a cause? <laughs> yeah. Is there not a cause today, guys? You know. Anyways. And he turned from him toward another, and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but, but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion, and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock, and I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. When he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, <laughs> and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defiled the armies of the living God. Ain't that the truth? You know, this is the way we have to be <laughs> if we're going to survive, man. You got to hit it head on, right? Just like when Satan attacks you, you uh hit him back, you know. Expose him. <laughs> Bring people to the fold, per se, you know. See, one thing I'm learning of is that Satan don't care about people, you know, or and us or having riches. He cares about his kingdom. Right? So what better way to punch Satan in the mouth than to take from his kingdom, right? And bind the strong man to plunder his house, like Jesus said, right? That's what we do. That is our job, bring people into the kingdom of God. Anyways. And Saul said to David, that art are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou um, art but a youth, and a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. There came a lion, 
and a bear. Oh, sorry. Get rid of all this. My servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said of the, unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor and put the helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go. For he or had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off. Basically didn't fit. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had, even in script. And his sling was in, the, er, in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Listen to this, guys. This is awesome. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when Philistine, or when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and a fair countenance. And um, Philistine said un unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. <laughs> I bet you that threw uh, Goliath for a loop, huh? <laughs> Amen to that. This day... Will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee, and take thy head from thee, and I will gi give the carcass of the host of the, Philistine, um, of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is God, there is a God in Israel. Amen. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battles is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass, when the Philistine arose and came, drew nigh to meet David, that David hastened and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag, took thence stone, or thence of stone, and slang it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into the forehead, and he fell upon the face of the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with the sling and with the stone, and smote the Philistine, and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. See, that's a man after God's own heart. And Goliath was a giant. He had five brothers, too. And it came to pass that after the year was expired, the time of kings go out to battle, Joab led forth the power of the army, wasted a country of the children of Ammon, and came and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried at Jerusalem, and Joab smote Rabbah and destroyed it. And David took the crown of their king from the or from off his head and found it to weigh a talent of gold and there were precious stones in it it was set upon david's head and he brought also exceedingly much spoil out of the city and he brought out the people that were in it and cut them in or with saws and with harrows of iron and with axes even so dealt david with all the cities of the children of ammon these were nephilim tribes and God sent a decree to go out, get all the women, children, beasts, everything, right? Because they were trying it again. You know, they were trying the Nephilim experiment again. So that's why God was saying all that. 
and David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. And it came to pass after this that arose war at Gezer with the Philistines, in which Sibachai, the Hushite, or Hushite, slew Sibai, that was of the children of the giant, and they were subdued. See, these, these are people of God now, man. They're, they're going out there without fear and taking these children of the, or the Nephilim out. <laughs> Anyways, and there was war again in the Philistines, and Elohanan, or Elhanan, the son of Jer, slew Lami, the brother of Goliath. See, he has another, there's a brother. The Gittite, whose spear staff was like Weaver's beam, which is pretty up there, <laughs> though he was a giant. And it could, you know, some say that, you know, some texts say that Goliath was the runt, and he was like 13 feet tall. So we can only imagine if, if, he, if he was the runt, his brothers were even taller. And yet again, there was war at Gath. And there was a man of great stature, whose fingers and toes were found in 20. This is, how, this is a feature of the Nephilim. Okay. And whose fingers and toes were four and twenty, six on each hand and six on each foot. And also, they also have two rows of teeth. Okay. And each foot and also was the son of the giant. But when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimea, Shimea, David's brother, slew him. These were born unto the giant and Gath. And they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. So there's giants afterwards, too. Now they're a little bit smaller this time around. Trying to, they're getting more and more human-like. Let's just put it that way. But, and, and another thing too, you know, it says that also during the flood or those flood times is that men also were experimenting with, you know, probably DNA splicing and stuff like that and trying to create God men, you know. So they did it too. So, and I think they're demons as well, you know, that's, their their earth was their primal origin, right? That's what it says. Anyways, let's move on here. Second Samuel twenty one through twenty. And there was yet a battle in Gad, and there was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers, and on every foot six toes. And twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant. See, got pretty basically the same thing. I just wanted to show that, you know, that there's another witness. And I'm not just throwing stuff out there or, you know, blowing smoke out of my butt. You know, this is stuff is there. And I always try to bring scripture. If I bring an extra biblical text, I want to bring so the scriptures that agree with it. Because if it doesn't agree with scripture, you have to throw it out. Anyways, Numbers 13, 30 through 33. We need to be like Caleb here and David and all that, man. Like, you're starting to see a uh, a pattern here. All right. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Amen. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up its inhabitants, <laughs> basically eating each other and eating the humans and eat, you know, basically. And all the people that saw in it, and also GMO foods, 
plants and everything, man. But the people that we saw in it are men of great stature, which means very tall men. And here we go. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak. You know, the Anakim that you hear about, you know, ancient aliens. But which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. I want you to picture that. Picture you as a grasshopper. Okay. And so we were in their sight. <laughs> so very tall people. So you can't necessarily blame them for being a little scared. <laughs> These were huge people, right? But we need to be like Caleb. So you got to remember, God is a bigger God. He's the Almighty. He's the one who created everything. He's got our backs. He's our shield, right? So don't fear. If you, you know, if you see one of these things, don't worry. God's got you. Simple as that. And I know we all don't know how we would react in situations, but this is why we read upon the word. You know, we rehearse his stuff, you know? Like, his holy days are basically rehearsals for the end times, at least most of them, in rehearsal for Jesus Christ. Anyways, Amos 2 9. Yet destroyed I the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars. Cedars are very tall, very tall. <laughs> and he was strong as the oaks. Yet, I destroyed his fruit from above and his roots from beneath. See, God has our backs. Now. One second. This is supposed to be. Okay. Genesis 23, 1-8. Now, I'm bringing this up because he's ne negotiating a plot with this guy named Ephron. But anyways, Genesis 23, 1-8. And Sarah was 170, or 7 and 20 years old. These were the years of the life of Sarah. Sarah died in Kerjahathraba, something like that. <laughs> oh boy, I'm terrible with names. The same is Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abram came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. And Abram stood up from before his dead and spake unto the sons of Heth, saying, I am a stranger and a sojourner with you. Give me a possession of a burying place with you that I may bury my dead out of my sight. And the children of Heth, Abram, sorry about that, guys, saying unto him, Hear us, my lord, Thou art mighty prince among... Hold on a second, guys. Let me go close this window. Back. Sorry about that, guys. Abram stood up from before his dead. I am a stranger. Blah, blah, blah. And the children of Heth answered Abram, saying unto him, Hear us, my lord, and thou art mighty prince among us, and the choice of our sepulchres bury the dead. None of us shall withhold from thee his uh, sepulcher, but that thou mayest bury the dead. Excuse me. And Abram stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, and even the children of Heth. And he communed with them, saying, If it be your mind that I shall bury my dead out of my sight, 
hear me and entreat for me to Ephron, the son of Zohar. So, what modern day text do we have that's named after that? It's kind of interesting. It's called the Zohar. But anyways, let's see what Ephron means. I've actually likened this site. It's called BibleStudyTools.com. I'm actually liking it. It's pretty good. It's a nice tool to have. Um, Ephron. Ephron. Like. The son of Zohar, the owner of the field and cave of Michipila, which Abraham bought for 400 shekels of silver. So it means fawn-like. What is a fawn? <laughs> a goat. Or a a uh, deer, kind of, I guess, more like. You know? <laughs> it's right there, guys. Alright, Job 26, 1 through 5. But Job answered and said, How hast thou helped him that is without power? How savest thou the arm that hath no strength? How hast thou consoled him that hath no wisdom? And how hast thou plentifully declared the thing as it is? To whom hast thou uttered words, and whose spirit came from thee? Dead things are formed from under the waters, and the inhabitants thereof. This right here is the beginning of the Raphaim. We'll see you in a second. So we got Raphaim, lofty men, giants. These are reanimated spirits of, or you know, bodies of the giants, basically. We'll see here. Okay, lofty men, giants. Rafa, Merg, Marg, RSV, Rafa, Deuteronomy, blah 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 blah. blah. Okay. The Aborigines of Palestine, afterwards conquered and dispossessed by the Canaanite tribes, are classed under the general title. They were known to the Moabites as Amim, fearful, and the Amorite, or Ammonites as Zanzumines. Some of them found a refuge among the Philistines and were still existing in the days of David. We know nothing of their origin. wonder why. Maybe because they were reanimated from the floods they were not necessarily connected with the giants okay now let's go to rafa this is the root of raphaim okay to heal make healthful to heal of god healer physician of men of hurts of nations involving restored favor, of individual distress, nifal, to be healed, um, literal, of persons, of water, pottery, of national hurts, of personal distress, to heal, literal, of national defects or hurts. <laughs> it's right there. Now, I'm going to show you some pictures of these guys here. These are now. This is the Minotaurs. Now, some of these. Let me. Before I preface this, that there is some pretty uh, sexual images in this stuff. So be prepared, guys. Just letting you know if there's kids, take them out of the room. But yeah. See, it's all right here. This is Greek stuff. This is, I think, Greek um, pottery that this stuff's on. This is like this guy. Yeah, you have this. He's wrestling with one. This guy here. The Minoans. I mean, there's this guy. You have Baal, who's represented as, you know, this guy. Then you got your uh, giants here, of course. 
Sorry, I couldn't think of the word <laughs> for some reason. But, um, yeah, look. I mean, look at all the depictions, guys. Look at this guy here compared to this guy. Right? Look at these. <laughs> this guy here. I mean, it's crazy. Why aren't we being taught this? Like, why? Now, I don't know if this is anything. This is probably fake, but yeah. yeah. And why are giants in our video games, too? Like, think about that. And there's fee fi fo fum. I smell the blood of an English man, right? Now this is where it gets a little sexual. These are the satyrs. This is, you know, Pan, also Pan, which is, you know, the Greek god. So, this guy here, this guy, this guy, see, excuse me guys, I apologize, but you see where all this stuff comes from. <laughs> Look, guys, look. These guys were not just doing just a bunch of DMT, you know. These guys were seeing this stuff in real time. It's all over the world, too. I mean, you got this. Sorry, guys. Excuse the sexual stuff, but anyways. And then look, there's just one more thing. Look, these are what you call the Nagas. Snake people. I mean, <laughs> these guys. Naga Serpent King. This guy here, the girl. Ancient Egyptian. I mean, it's all there. But I want to end this with the genealogy of Jesus Christ. As you can see, he comes from a pure line. That he is the Messiah. Matthew 1, 1 through 17. The book of the generations of Jesus Christ. The son of David. Already good genetics there, man. We saw how David was. The son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob. Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. And Judas begat Phares and Zara of Thamar. And Phares begat es er Esram. And Esram begat Aram. And Aram begat Amidad, or Aminadad. And Aminadad begat Nasan. Nasan begat Salmon. And Salmon be begat Boaz or Booz of Rashab, and Booz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse, Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. That was the guy, or I believe that was uh, the guy he sent to die, if I believe. I don't want to give you guys false information on that. Anyways, um, and Solomon begat Robam, and Robam begat Abiah, and Abiah begat Asa, and Asa begat Josephat, Josephat begat Joram, and Joram begat Ozias, and Ozias begat um, Joatham, Joatham begat Akaz, and Akaz begat Ezekiah, or Ezekias, Ezekias, and Ezekias begat Manassas, Manassas begat Ammon, and Ammon begat Josias, and sorry, and brought, and after they were brought, or and about the time they were, let's see, and Josias begat Jeconias and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon. 
After they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias begat Salathiel, Salathiel begat Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel begat Eb Ebud, and Ebud begat Elakim, Elakim begat Azor, Azor begat Sadok, and Sadok begat Akim, and Akim begat Eliud, and Eliud begat Eleazar, and Eleazar begat Mathen, Mathen begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, and of whom was born Jesus, who was called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations, and from carrying away into Babylon into Christ for 14 generations. You see there, guys? This It's the pure genealogy of Jesus Christ. It means God preserved after, through the flood, through after the flood, he preserved the line of Jesus Christ. That's how you know he's God. That's how you know he is the almighty God. If he can do that for Jesus Christ, imagine what he can do for you. I wanted to end that with you guys. So you guys get a little bit of hope so you know that Jesus is the Messiah. You guys have a wonderful day. And, his, you know, just keeping his word. All that matters.